Hi, it's Jory with Taitland Studio. Welcome back to another episode. And in today's video, I will be building this table with square legs. Now I like to call it the cuboid table, that style that I have on my website. Now I am starting off with some white oak here. Now it's eight quarter material. Now essentially what that means is it's two inches thick and it's just a fraction of inches. So eight quarter would be two inch, four quarter would be one inch, so on and so forth. Once I've marked out those leg pieces, cut about and, and all that, I bring those pieces over to the jointer. Now what the jointer does is it will flatten each edge of the board and I first flatten the face and then I flatten the edge. Now once I've done that, I bring it over to the table saw and I just cut off the excess on the end and then I set the fence on the table saw for the width of the table legs. Now I think those widths came in at about three and a half inches. And once I've cut those all to the right width, I'm just bringing them over to the planer here. And you can see I'm just running it through and flattening out those boards. Once I've done that, I bring it over to the table saw again and I have a miter saw sled and that's just cutting the length. And uh, once I've cut all those pieces to the correct length, I can start to uh, work on the joinery. Now the joinery method that I do use is called floating mortise and tenon. And I have a tool, a machine, that's called a domino. And what it does is it cuts little slots in the ends of the boards. And I have those little wooden uh, pegs or pieces, which are called tenons. And what I do is I put those tenons into those holes and that's what connects the wood. And you can see me just putting those pieces in. And uh, the nice thing about the machine is that it lines it up really accurately. Now, if you are someone who is uh, building it, say you're a DIYer, um, I've often had people ask me, do I need a domino machine? You certainly do not. Um, for myself, because I am a production shop and this is you know, basically my full-time job, um, it does save a lot of time in creating those uh, connection points. Say if you had a dowel or something else, you can uh, use that instead. But uh, yeah, I just, I, before I assemble the legs, I like to sand them and I also run the router over them. Now the reason I do that is once those legs are assembled and if you're trying to sand them or use the router, it's very difficult to get the sander in the corners and it's also when you run the router sometimes you just can't get in it because um, just those edges just just the way the wood is joined together it's very difficult to use the router so I do that ahead of time but yeah anyways you can see I've glued up those uh, tenons and I'm just putting them in here and I've you know, just making sure that I wipe out all that excess glue because what happens is if you don't wipe off excess glue and you go to stain it later, the stain doesn't apply properly so it looks blotchy in those places. So I really take my time just cleaning out all that glue squeeze out and making sure it's, it's nice and clean and it's just the bare wood in there. And you can see every time you tighten those clamps, a little bit of glue will squeeze out and I just wipe them out. Uh, you can use a, a wet rag. Sometimes I'll even use a toothbrush. I've seen people use straws to get in corners, but uh, I'm using some baby wipes. <laughs> That's just what works for me. It's easy and it's convenient. And once those legs have been dr dried, I'm using my domino again. And what I'm doing is just cutting the slots in the stretcher. Now the stretcher is the piece that connects those two legs together. Uh, once I'm finally done all those grooves, I can go on to the, the assembly. Now, you can see I'm just kind of dry fitting it here and just making sure everything fits. But uh, yeah, I'm just putting lots of glue on those tenons and I'm just putting them in and just wiping off the excess glue. And, and, and that's, you know, again, just something you really want to pay attention to. Um, and uh, I'm just kind of banging it in here and you can see that I'm just wiping it out again and all that sort of stuff. But um, yeah, I'm just clamping it up here. Now, because those, that, those table legs are so wide, they were about, I think about 
six and a half feet was the overall length and I didn't have clamps that long so I had to double up on the clamps and just clamp them together. Now I just end up uh, kind of using the tape measure to measure the distance between those legs so if one side's a little bit longer I know I need to um, just use the clamps to squeeze it down. Now here I am just moving on to the tabletop boards and I've jointed them just like the leg pieces but here I, you can see I'm just running them through the planer. And in this section of the video what I'm doing is just using that drywall T-square just to mark uh, where I'm going to place the dominoes. Now when I am using the domino on the legs that is for strength but the tabletop the reason I do that is that when I put those slots in the tabletop heat boards I can uh, just put it on the same uh, like I'm referencing off the top on both boards so that when those tenons are together and I push those boards together they won't move up or down at all so it'll be a nice flat tabletop. Yeah, I'm sure after I've glued it up and spread out the glue and clamped it up you can see I've actually taken a bunch of sawdust here uh, just from my dust collector bin there and I'm just spreading it out over the tabletop. Now that does a couple things. It, it helps with the cleanup to get rid of that excess glue squeeze out. And it also, the fine little dust particles will sort of work their way into any possible gaps or voids that I might have uh, missed when the uh, clamps uh, squeeze the tabletop together. But yeah. Anyways, uh, I just go and sand it, then I'm moving to trim off the edge here with the track saw. And uh, you could certainly use a circular saw, but uh, I have a track saw, so I just use that. It makes quick work of it. And I'm just doing the router on the edge. Now, on the corners, I like to use a quarter inch round over, and then along the top and the bottom edge, I use a 1 8 round over. And it's a nice crisp edge and with this modern style table I find looks really slick and uh, after I've done that the uh, router sometimes leaves a bit of a, a mark just from the bearing riding along the edge but I just use some sandpaper and I just come over the edge and just smooth it out just to make sure it's nice and smooth to the touch and that pretty much is the build part so I'm just working on the stain here now the customer, she did request a uh, kind of a custom combination of stain and uh, what we ended up is using uh, Minwax and we used two parts of the classic gray with mixed with one part of weathered oak. So it's got quite a gray tone in there but you can still see the color of the natural wood coming out underneath so there is some warmth to it. Now her house did have quite a bit of gray in it so we wanted to achieve, well she wanted to achieve that, that warmth like I said and uh, but still have the gray in there so it didn't look too out of place but I've just let that stain just soak in really well and just kind of going over it multiple times and finally once it's all said and done I uh, just wiped it all off but actually you can see there that I was just sanding a little bit out there uh, what happened was there was a little bit of glue squeeze out that I must have somehow missed when I was doing the final sanding. But I was able to quickly clean that up with a piece of sandpaper even though the stain was on it. It uh, removes it just fine. And I'm just wiping off all of the excess here after I let it soak in for a while. Now this, uh, the legs here, you can see I'm working on them and I'm just applying the stain and uh, just it's basically the same process as the tabletop. I'm just applying the stain, letting it soak in, and working my way through. After the stain has dried, usually takes about a day, day and a half, I'm applying the finish now. Now the finish I'm using is the Osmo Raw and what that does is it's got a little bit of a white pigment in it so when you do apply that finish it really cuts down on the amount of yellowing that the wood will do. I just went over it with my large uh, applicator here, it's a polisher and uh, I just kind of work it in here, really get it into all the wood grain and I end up using two coats. Now after I apply each coat I just use a shop towel there and just wipe off the excess. But 
At the end of the day, the table just turned out gorgeous and the customer was really happy. And that's the video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.